Hi, this is Amy Lewis. This is Engineers Unplugged. Hi, this is Amy Lewis, Marketing Manager at Cisco, and we're here with an incredibly special episode of Engineers Unplugged. I've got Ethan and Greg, better known perhaps as the packet pushers, and we're going to be talking about tunnel, tunnel underlay fabrics. So Ethan, take it away. So the topic here is in the world of software-defined networking and in the world of virtualization, uh, there's a notion of an overlay network. An overlay network would be a network container that contains, perhaps with a VXLAN tag, uh, someone's network. And it's something used by cloud providers and even more uh, also enterprises now to contain someone's network and keep it separate from other networks while keep writing it on the same physical infrastructure, which we would call the underlay network. So the idea here is to talk about what an underlay network would look like that carries this tunnel traffic, this overlay traffic, that would be a tunnel underlay fabric, or just a tunnel fabric for short. Now, Greg Farrow here has been working on, uh, uh, works for a cloud company, has been doing a lot of design in this area, and uh, we thought this would be a great topic for engineers unplugged. So Greg, why don't you get into, uh, first of all, what a virtualization infrastructure looks like, yep. and uh, kind of present the problem here. Okay, so let's start off with looking at the problem. As most of us know, when we're working in a virtualization network, we are talking about a bunch of VM hosts here at the edge. You've got your hypervisors across the top, then you have a fairly, I've got a fairly compressed looking network core here with some edge switches, and then connected down to a core and a fairly standard sort of a spanning tree north-south architecture, which is tremendous, right? That's pretty normal, it's what we'd expect. And when a, when a VM that's in one of these machines generates a frame, an ethernet frame or an IP packet, it crosses the v-switch, and the thing to remember is that in most hypervisors today that your average v-switch is nothing more than an advanced sort of robotic patch panel and really just connects the virtual NIC to the physical NIC and it's very simple very low-tech sort of capability as it crosses out of the v-switch it'll hit one of these two edge switches it doesn't really matter which one because the switches will then forward it up to the core according to the path so and we that's called switching in the case of a ethernet frame or routing in the case of an IP packet as it crosses up through the network core and then if it's destined down to a VM over here, it's going to pass through here as normal. Now that sort of approach is fairly standardized today, but what I wanted to introduce you to is the concept of what's coming down in the cloud networking space or the, the virtualization space is the concept of taking the vSwitch and extending it out to add networking capabilities. Now my syntax for this is that instead of thinking of the vSwitch as like a patch panel, it's actually a networking device and it's actually capable of routing and switching in a way. Now some of these features aren't here today but I'll give you a taste of what the concept is in this little mark here. So today we have a VM and the VM in the hypervisor, there might be a couple of different hyper VMs in that hypervisor and down here is the vSwitch. What will happen is we'll replace that with a networking agent. And the networking agent is a piece of software, in the case of a VMware, it'll be the, the next generation of vSwitch in, in VXLAN, and it's VXLAN enabled. Or in Cisco, it's the Nexus 1000V switch, uh, software switch that goes in, which is own unique architecture. And what we can do in the vSwitch is encapsulate the traffic as it comes out into one of these VXLAN tunnels. Now, VXLAN tunnels are just a way of encapsulating Ethernet over IP so that we can extend the VXLANs between these servers. So these servers are just communicating as if they're a VLAN. Some of these VLANs, you, you get VLANs all over the place, you've got spanning tree problems. It, it's a bit risky when you get your spanning tree, you get a lot of, once you run out of VLANs, there's only 4,000 VLANs. 4,000 sounds like a lot, but it's actually right, not, right? right. 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 So on a good day, it's not, it's a lot, but not, not so much. So what actually happens is this thing becomes a router, and it can actually route the destination traffic into one of these tunnels, according to what you need to do. Okay, so that's Fairly straightforward, although perhaps not. A, it's a new idea, perhaps to many. But let's have a look at what happens when we start saying, "I've got a VM over here, and a VM over here, and I've got a tunnel running from this VM across this fabric up to this VM." And then I might have a second VM. I'll do this in blue just to highlight it, and it might have its own tunnel over to here. So what is the network fabric now see. What the networking core sees is just these IP, point-to-point -point IP connections running across the underlay network. So one of the names that we have for what the network now becomes is the underlay, and this tunnel here becomes an overlay network because instead of actually, what the VM doesn't do is the native packet is not switched hop by hop through the network. It doesn't get switched here or here or here or here. 
what it actually does is just goes down the tunnel. Now it's still IP, the VXLAN encapsulated, yep. UDP encapsulated data, is still rooting across this core or switching across this core in the, in the underneath tunnel fabric, but there's two networks between this VM. It goes from here to here. So now we are completely free of the physical nature of the network. Now, the underlay network still matters. In other words, what that network is and what it is that is carrying these encapsulated packets is still a pretty big deal. It's pretty important. Yeah. So, what sort of topologies are people likely to see? So, most likely what we're going to see today is the use of existing technologies that we have now. You're going to be able to take this type of idea in your vCloud software or your OpenStack KV. You're going to need to be able to take that up and, and do that in your OpenStack or your KVM. And any of your existing networks will do it. So work over your spanning tree design, your rapid spanning tree, your multiple instance spanning tree, your MLAG, your VPC, your VSS, all those types of technologies that we use today. Yeah, in, in other words, we're talking about a traditional yeah. uh, uh, network that you, you would see today. Your underlay network is the network that you've designed and that you're familiar with that's got a lot of forwarding paths and, uh, and is forwarding on all links and is redundant and is resilient and all that. The key here is that we're carrying VXLAN packets. We still need a secure network or a, uh, a resilient network to ride them across. Yeah. So. So, MLAG, VPC, that's the things that we're doing today. But also a fabric path network comes into play here because you get equal cost multipath. You know, so having this ability to have a switch and then have a leaf spine type design, which is a cloth tree, and then you can actually have multiple paths to your destination, right? So you can have this. So a fabric path network will try to load balance across all of these available paths equally. At layer two. At layer two. Yeah. Yep. And that means that the dependencies between these switches start to fade away, right? So I could upgrade one of these core switches using fab in a fabric path, mm -hmm. and I just lose this one, and I've still got three quarters of my bandwidth is available. And that's where the features of the fabric path nature coming in. Right. The, the, the nice be, bit being here, as long as you can get that encapsulated tunnel packet out of the virtual machine yep. into that network, that tunnel underlay fabric, yep. you can tolerate a whole lot of uh, hardware outages but have really negligible impact on the connectivity of the host to host itself. Exactly right. And also importantly, when we want to change the network, this network between here, maybe we wanted to bring up another VM in this hypervisor, then I can just add new tunnels to this network but I'm not actually changing the physical configuration of this underlay. I'm not adding a new VLAN to here. Right. This IP endpoint here and this IP endpoint here are just new sources and destinations in a traffic flow over an existing network. What does that mean to me? That means that I'm now able to make changes to my network when I'm live, right? Yeah. So I can actually just make changes. I don't have to worry about spanning trees or VLAN propagations or VLAN trunking or routing flaps because I'm adding a new IP subnet to the network. A massive change to things. That was awesome. Um, I want to just back off a second so we can all see what we've got here. Um, my question to you, um, as always, we, we like to wrap the show up with unicorns. So uh, on the unicorn scale, where are we in terms of, of this roadmap on, on a scale of one to unicorns? We're talking unicorns riding over the horizon, cresting the side of the hill on a tsunami of glitter. So, there is a, we're at a point now where this technology is real, right? So the pieces of this are here. How many people are going to be dropping this into the networks today? It's, it's only just arrived. It's full of a bunch of new ideas. But this is the future of what networking looks like because as we know, our networks are, are complex. It's hard to make changes. It's hard to get those upgrades done. How do we make our networks better for our business so that we can make changes within 15 minutes? not within seven day change windows or coming in on the weekend and missing out on your kid's birthday. This is the sort of technology that gets you home at five o'clock in the afternoon. That's where it is. So yes, it's unicorns, but it's very real and we're gonna, there's a lot of momentum behind this even if you aren't seeing it today. Awesome, I love it. Well, I think I'm gonna let Ethan off the hook here, although I'm tempted, you didn't draw. I was gonna say, you know, I wanna see you draw a unicorn to close out the show. You, you let, uh, let Greg... a marker fail, I'm afraid, no. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm gonna let Ethan start to draw a unicorn while we, we close out the show, just to see what happens. <laughs> so, so Greg didn't know he was getting off the hook. Let's see it, let's see it. Walls <laughs> unicorn? Yes, you can. <laughs> Chris Wall has a very infamous unicorn. So I just want to thank 
both of you guys as we're we're closing out the show. Again, it's a, what an honor to have Pack of Pushers on with us. So really appreciate it. I know that everybody watching is going to enjoy this episode. It's fantastic. So for more information from Greg and from Ethan, you've got their uh, Twitter handles up there. So at Packet Pushers, at Ethereal Mine, at EC Banks. And, uh, and as always, just remember that too, too much, much networking, networking would, would never, never be, be enough. enough. <laughs> That's it.